Hello everyone, and welcome to my fifth tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering uh, some new features, but first I'd like to elaborate on where I last left off in the previous tutorial. Uh, in the last tutorial, we covered the, con the creation of the blog entry controller class. Now, this class supports a few methods here. It supports a method for retrieving a blog entry, a method for deleting a blog entry, and a method for updating a blog entry. Now, um, since then, I've actually developed a couple uh, new uh, classes called, and um, related dependencies called account controller and blog controller. And one of my reasons for doing this is that for the most part, these classes uh, use features that we've already covered, and any additional features that they use, I'll be covering in this tutorial. So by the end of this tutorial, um, all, the, all the new code should be relatively self-explanatory. Now, um, I'm going to review the code, but before I do that, I'd just like to briefly cover the topics I'm going to go over. Uh, I'm going to be covering uh, some additional uh, Jackson annotations. I'm going to be covering exception handling in Spring. And I'm also going to be uh, showing a feature and use of a feature in Makito called argument capture objects, which will prove to be pretty useful in certain situations. So uh, to start off, I'm going to review our code base here. We have a couple uh, new entities in uh, our entities package. You can see we have an account. Uh, this represents a user in the database with a username and password. Um, this will be important once we start um, using JPA, but right now it's very important for um, link building, as you'll see uh, in our assemblers. Um, we also have a uh, blog entity, and the blog has a reference to the owner, and that um, is important um, when we pass this blog to Hatos uh, to generate links. Uh, our assembler will be able to use the, the owner instance to be able to generate a link uh, relating this particular resource to the owner. So um, these, these um, references are helpful uh, not just for use with Hatos, but also when we start building relations with JPA. Uh, now, uh, we also have a blog entry entity, and this is the same entity except we've added a reference to the containing blog. Now, we've also added um, a, a package for exceptions, for additional exceptions in our services package, and these exceptions um, here's one of them, account does not exist exception. These are runtime exceptions. Now, I have chose runtime ex exceptions because um, it's easier to catch them in the appropriate layer without um, adding a bunch of rethrows uh, in your application. Um, now, um, different people have um, different opinions about um, whether to use checked exceptions or runtime exceptions, but I'm going to use uh, runtime exceptions in this tutorial. And um, you can see we have a few more exceptions here. Now these are exceptions that are thrown um, by our service layer of our application. Uh, if um, we, um, bit, for example, uh, count does not exist exception will be thrown by the create blog exception if a related blog cannot, uh, if a related account cannot be found. So uh, we're going to be um, using these exceptions in our service layer, and we also have. A, a util package that includes a, a blog entry list and a blog list. Now these will be used by our resource assemblers to assemble uh, lists uh, for um, displaying a, a, um, a bunch of blog entries or a bunch of blogs um, in a list. And um, these are not entities, but they're utility classes that um, basically wrap our entities and allow us to add additional metadata as we go into the future. So we could potentially add data for pagination to these classes. Um, we also have the uh, account service, which is an additional service which is will be used with our account controller class. And uh, you can see we have a, uh, a method for finding account, creating account, creating a blog associated with account. And we have a uh, blog entry service. Uh, which is which, and I've refactored the names to be more descriptive here. Um, and this is important because you may create um, related kinds of entities, and um, you'd like your methods to um, be pretty self descriptive so that you know what you're updating and what you're creating. Um, so I'm going, so I've uh, refactored this to make this more descriptive. And um, in our blog service, 
uh, you can see that um, we have um, a method for creating a blog entry associated with the blog, a method for finding all of the blogs, and this will be important for, um, this will be function sort of like an index so that people can see find every single blog on the site and um, pick out the blog they want to uh, look at. And uh, later on you could add a search function or something like that, um, but I'm just going to do this to uh, find all the blogs for now. And um, we have a find all blog entries function which finds all the blog entries related to a particular blog. And we have the find blog function which finds a particular uh, blog based on its ID. I'm just going to write ID here. And um, and now in, now that describes the uh, service layer of our application and uh, the core layer of our application. And we still have the rest layer of our application. Now you'll notice that the rest layer has um, three other kinds of exceptions. Now these are Spring exceptions that Spring can handle. Um, these exceptions uh, use the Spring annotation response status, uh, which Spring looks for when uh, trying to decide what is the proper status code to send back to the user when an exception is, uh, isn't caught by our application. So I'm going to uh, show you guys how to use this in a moment here. Um, but basically, this will allow us to send various kinds of responses to the client based on our program not behaving correctly. Over in our MVC package, we have our new controllers. We have the account controller, which includes a method for creating an account, a method for getting an account, and a method for creating a blog associated with that account. Our blog controller has a method for finding all the blogs, a method for getting a blog, creating a blog, and um, finding all blog entries. And these are basically um, interfacing with the services we've already gone over. And uh, blog entry controller has the addition of a couple uh, more methods um, that we covered, that we um, had a link in the uh, source code in the description of the last tutorial. And um, finally, we have um, some additional assemblers. Uh, we have um, an account a resource assembler, and you can see uh, it links to self here. Um, we have um, a blog resource assembler. So um, this one's particularly interesting because um, it doesn't have a lot of data about itself, but mostly has data referencing to other resources. So when we assemble this in a list of uh, blog resources, when we assemble a, a list of blog, uh, blog resources, um, it will so, serve sort of as an index uh, for finding um, related um, uh, resources on the server. So um, basically, um, sh this stuff should, uh, if you study it, um, should start to make sense. And um, hope hopefully by the end of this tutorial, after we cover the new features, um, it should make uh, quite a bit of sense once you um, download the source code and review it. Now, um, I'm going. I've actually set up our project to have um, two failing tests. And um, if I go over here and I run our tests here. Um, you'll see we have two failing tests, and I haven't actually implemented the code to make these tests pass because uh, creating the code to make them pass will actually illustrate the new features. So um, over here we have get existing account. Now if I just I'm just going to run this um, test in isolation here um, so that we can focus on it. And so uh, over here you can see it says um, the expected value for the JSON attribute password. Um, it was expected to be null, but it was actually test. So what this is, this uh, function is testing is we're um, find, using the um, uh, the get uh, re the this particular URL rest slash account slash one. So we're trying to find the account with the ID of one, and in order to do that, um, we need to send a request of a get request to our controller. And um, we're expecting that the password isn't specified for our account resource. And this is important for security. We don't want our password to just be um, shown um, uh, to the user like this. We, uh, there's not really a use. Uh, this is when people access our account, we expect it to be more like a profile information and not, it shouldn't really include the password. It's, that's not very necessary. So um, basically, we're uh, checking. Um, is it a null value? So it should be a null value, but it actually was test. So um, JSON is being transferred 
um, to back to our client the way it should based on everything we've gone over so far. But we'd like to modify that behavior by using a um, Jason, a, a Jackson annotation. So go ahead and go to the account resource and uh, you'll want to uh, annotate the get password function with a uh, gjson ignore attribute. Now um, what this will do is this will, will Jason will see this and it will ignore this property um, when getting the pass uh, when trying to get the password to serialize our object. Now um, basically um, this will have different effects on different versions of Jackson that you're using and it can actually affect the set password function. So I'm going to do a test here to make sure that um, our data is actually being sent to the server properly. So I'm in order, first I'm going to make sure our test pass is based on the code we just wrote. So I'm going to run this. And you can see it passes now. But um, we still want to add that additional check. So I'm going to go over to the create account a non-existing username. So this um, it completes with a status of is created. So this creates an account here. So I'm just going to um, run this test in, uh, so we can focus on it in isolation. And I'm going to add um, something else. Now, um, this is where I'm going to talk about um, Makito's feature called an argument captor. And that allows us to see the uh, when the particular kind of object that was passed to our create account function here um, on our mock object. So in order to do that, you review after the fact, after the method has been executed, you can capture what it was that was passed to our, serv uh, to our mock object. So in order to do that, you want to use the argument capture object. So you go ahead and add a field. We'll call it the private argument captor account account captor. And uh, to instantiate it, you want to use the for class method of the argument captor class. And specify the account. Now um, you use a special uh, syntax for um, grabbing the um, uh, the argument out of the um, service. Uh, so uh, okay, so here is the um, function we're reviewing: create account non-existing username. And so I'm going to go ahead and use the verify function of Makito, and I'm going to pass in our service, and then I'm going to um, call the create account function. So verify is a Makito feature that allows us to verify was a method called. Um, at all. And so if we just write um, uh, basically um, create account and we write any account dot class, something like that, and we run this, um, it should pass. Um, so um, this should verify that our method was in fact called. And if we um, did something, yeah, so basically if we erase this, if we commented out this, um, it should fill, but it will probably fill for um, other reasons. Um, but let's just see if this is uh, how this feels. All right, well, it filled for other reasons, a null pointer exception. But um, basically, it verifies that the create account method was called. And you can actually pass in, in here, the um, argument cap, uh, um, the argument captor, uh, sorry, uh, the account capture dot uh, capture method. Uh, you, you use the account capture dot capture method, and this uh, creates um, an instant. This allows uh, Makito to um, inject in our account capture object um, an instance of whatever was passed to um, our serv our mock object up over here. So I can go ahead and um, uh, now grab the password field that was passed. So I can go and write password equals account captor dot get value dot get password. So this gets the password of the uh, account of the account that was passed to our create account method up here. So now I can go ahead and assert that it equals something. I'm going to assert it equals test because um, the expected uh, the reason test is the expected value is because we sent a account to the server with the password test so it should create account with the password test so if I go ahead and I use test here and I pass in our password as what it, it actually was um, we should get a filling test here because um, the particular version of Jackson we're using uh, handles um, uh, this uh, JSON ignore in a, in a different way and you can see that 
the expected was test, but the actual was null. So our password isn't being passed to our controller. So in order to fix that, you want to go to your um, account um, resource class, and um, you want to specify the JSON property annotation on your setter method. And this will tell um, this will tell Jake's, Jackson. Um, we just set, set that password is still a property, and we only want to ignore um, the uh, serialization of the object when sending data back to the client. So um, if you go ahead and run this now, it should work. Okay, so it works now. So um, basically, that's the usage of JSON ignore and JSON property, and you can also set the um, the name of your field using JSON property. Like I could change the the particular attribute that JSON is being um, sent as, but I'm just going to use the default, which uses your field names to uh, generate the JSON attributes. So um, now um, I want to cover exception handling, and in order to do that, I created a filling test that requires us to implement use one of uh, Spring's uh, exception handling mechanisms to uh, fix. So you can see we have a filling test here, create blog existing blog name. So if I, I'm going to run this test in isolation so we can focus on it here. And um, so basically, um, an exception is being thrown and crashing our JUnit test. And the reason why is because I specified that if we create a blog um, and say the, uh, uh, I mean, if we create, yeah, if we create a blog and say a blog already exists with the name of that blog, um, we'd like our program to um, throw an exception that the blog already exists. So um, now you might want to choose a more descriptive name such as um, blog blog name already exists or something like that. But I chose um, blog exists uh, exception. And so um, we want to throw that exception. And that's a um, service layer exception. And we need to re-throw as a rest layer exception something that a Spring can uh, figure out uh, needs uh, something that Spring can see uh, will change the HTTP response that we send back to the client. So I'm going to go over to our um, create blog function uh, in our uh, account in our account class. So I mean account controller class because our account controller creates uh, blogs associated with an account. So if you go to your account controller class, you can see um, a create uh, blog function over here. And um, basically, uh, we want to catch the exception of um, blog exists exception. And we want to throw, throw a new um, conflict exception, uh, wrapping that exception. So if I go ahead and run this now, it should pass. Now, the reason that it uh, passes is in our create blog existing blog name, we expect an is conflict uh, status code. And um, this, ex the exception that we read through um, our uh, previous exception as, has the annotation of uh, response status. And this instruct, when uh, this exception bubbles up the call stack and uh, the Spring Framework sees it, it knows that this, uh, that uh, Spring knows that it needs to generate a response uh, using the status code specified in this annotation. So um, that's how, well, this is one of the methods that Spring uh, works with exceptions. And um, so uh, basically, uh, I've reviewed the, um, so, so, well, yeah, this is um, one of the more simple ways that Spring handles exceptions, but uh, there are other ways of handling exceptions, but this is the one we'll be using as, I think it's one of the easier to use. And so, I'm, so um, in later tutorials, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the uh, service layer of our application, it basically implementing these classes here, and I'll be using, I'll be setting up our test environment and a persistence layer in later tutorials. And so in this tutorial, we've uh, covered um, basically some uh, Jackson annotations, um, some uh, Makito features, and also Spring exception handling, and uh, also reviewed the code base for later tutorials, which is basically to tie up loose ends so that we can focus on persistence and JPA and different things like that. So anyways, if you guys uh, found this tutorial helpful, uh, like and subscribe to my channel, and thank you for watching.